It's time to get the breakdown started. One, two, three, three. First up, 10 observations. Just took it out and just boom, put it right on the ground. It's first and 10. About that time, let's get right into it. Number one. All right, number one is that Kaz Allen, despite what anyone else tries to tell you, including Ron Rivera, had a very bad day because Kaz Allen was one of very few guys who with a good day would have made the football team. Instead, he makes himself very easy to put on the practice squad, which ultimately is going to cost him money. The good news for Kaz Allen is I don't think this is the worst thing for his long-term prospects and his NFL career, where if he was put out there too early and muffed a couple punts and gets cut, is that enough to cut his career short? Sometimes you just need a little bit longer to bake, and specifically on certain skills, and when you're a guy who has returned a lot of kicks, has explosive power uh, or explosiveness, and hasn't done a lot of punt returns, catching punts could be that very skill. It's hard. B. Mitch told the same story on the broadcast he told on our show last week and has undoubtedly told hundreds of times over the 15-plus years that he's been retired from the NFL, nevertheless, the 14 years he played in it. When Brian Mitchell, who should be in the Hall of Fame and is the second-leading all-time all-purpose yardage gainer in the history of the league, learned how to catch punts, his first practice, he tried to field 20 punts, and he caught none of them. He only touched one. The rest of them hit somewhere within his general vicinity, and he didn't even get a hand on them. It's hard. And Kaz Allen muffed one and also caught another, but Fair caught it inside the six. or in, I think it was the six-yard line, so inside the 10, an area where there, you either let it go or you catch it because you're going to return it. Giving your team the ball safely at the six-yard line doesn't really do a lot. So the decision-making is very, very difficult as a punt returner. The actual catching of the football is very hard. And, oh, by the way, the thing that really, to me, solidifies him getting initially cut from this team is going to be the fact that he dropped two passes as a receiver. He had a nice little stretch in the middle of camp where he looked really good, showed his explosiveness, but at the end of the day, he's got too much growing to do. He is a prime practice squad guy and a guy who could play football for them this year. Week six, week seven, he's catching every punt. He's doing a great job situationally. If they even you know practice that stuff, they can continue to get him reps while getting Dax Milne, you know, what he needs to stay sharp in, in the very limited punt returning that he does. He catches the ball. That's kind of kind of his thing. But catching it is better than not catching it. The chances you make a big play on special teams are not very high. The chances that uh not giving your offense the ball ends poorly are one hundred. That's why it is so favored to just have a guy who's safe back there. And so with all that said, I think Kaz Allen, from a make the 53 standpoint, crushed his chances. From the commander standpoint, it was a great way for him to do it because they know what he's capable of. They clearly liked him enough to bring him in as a priority undrafted free agent. But if he was an undrafted free agent, that means every team passed on him in the draft and they're not going to watch that game and go, that's the guy we got to bring in. So they've got some other guy that they did bring in who also has trouble with his hands or decision-making and punts or whatever, super athlete that they're developing and have just invested in from springtime through now. So sucks for Kaz Allen. I think there's basically no chance he makes it, but I think this could ultimately wind up being something that gives him a little bit of a runway here with the practice squad, assuming that he's brought back later this week and, uh, and he could contribute for this team later, th- even this season, nevertheless, in the years to come. That, to me, is the biggest thing from the game. Here's the other stuff that I think is interesting. Um, but that, was that to me, was clearly the most definitive. Uh, number two, uh, as we continue on, first and ten. Number two. Jake Fromm is an ideal third quarterback. He is smart. He is not incompetent in the offense. But let's not freak out because he had a two back-to-back good halves against guys who are mostly not NFL players. Jake Fromm is a 4A player. Um, If he ever gets out there in a game for any extended stretch, you are in trouble. Could Could he win you one game or play well enough that you win the game? Sure. Is he, generally speaking, going to get everybody lined up correctly and and do all that stuff? Yes. And here's the thing about a third quarterback. You can run your entire... If you can run your entire offense with them on the field from like a knowledge standpoint, 
that is a huge advantage. And with Bienemy being so quarterback friendly, again, if he had to play a week because something terrible happened, then okay, that's a guy to have. But the most important trait they can have is being smart to be good as a and like execute at a high enough level. The um, not the practice squad, but the uh, the scout team. And do they help you in the meeting room? Can he sit down with Sam Howell and Jacoby Brissett and Tavita Pritchard and Biennemi and Zampezi and everyone in that quarterback room and be a contributor in meetings? Yes. He's a guy that I think has a future potentially in coaching. Um, Is he better now than he was a couple years ago with the Giants when he had a QBR in his two starts of 15.4? Absolutely. Is he better than Jacoby Brissett, who was a top 15 quarterback in the league last year? Absolutely not. And if he played with the twos, you would see that. So, Fromm had a very good spring, a very good camp. Jake Fromm should be proud of himself. But for the small but loud segment of the fan base that thinks somehow he's worth cutting Jacoby Brissett for, that's that's absurd. But I will say, like, good job, Jake Fromm. You should be brought back on the practice squad And if something happens to one of your top two quarterbacks this year, this team is not completely and totally screwed if they have to go to him, which is about as good as you could possibly ask for, for a number three quarterback. Um, That's just kind of how the league works. There's not enough good ones to go around for everyone to have a good starter. Why do you think that your team gets to have a three deep uh, of good quarterbacks? You're lucky you got two. You got two starting legitimate caliber, but other teams like your week one opponent have zero. All right, uh, continuing on. First and 10 here on the Hoffman Show. Number three. Bryson Tremaine is an interesting sleeper for this roster. I do not think he's going to make it. And unfortunately, I don't know that he's going to be able to sneak on the practice squad either. But damn, if I had one more spot, I'd give it to him, at least on the practice squad. And I'd mess around and think about him for the 53. Why? That doesn't seem to make sense on the surface. Hell, you're not even going to keep him on the 53 uh, and you were saying you might, and then you're not going to keep him on practice squad, but he's one of one in their room. They don't have another big tall guy. And he has produced day in, day out in training camp, especially in the second half of camp. He has gotten better. And he's a guy that I think could be a player for them in the long term. Like you look at what Cam Sims is continuing to do. Um, I know he had a couple of big catches, uh, a special teams guy who was really good here for a long time. Never going to be a top flight receiver, but could he have a big game at some point? Like Cam Sims had that one really big game. Um, and could he catch a fade for you? And can he just do things that big six, four receivers can do that smaller guys obviously do not have quite as easy of a time doing? Yeah. The problem is, um, He's stuck behind Allen, who we already talked about, who's got special, special upside as a returner. And then Tinsley is one of the few down roster guys that was actually more productive than Tremaine. So this becomes a very difficult decision for the receiver group. And if you wanted to mess around and keep seven, I think that could be an option. Do you find a way to keep seven? You know, and we can talk about some of that as we go through today. We'll do our roster projection later on in the show. Um, Take Command's roster projection is out now, by the way, on the podcast feed. But um, Tremaine is one of those interesting guys. If he gets cut, he's going to go somewhere. And he should, like, he's a guy that in three years could pop up on an active roster somewhere. And you're like, wasn't that guy in Commander's Camp? Um, Like, what's the kid in, um, oh, God, Anthony, this is going to freaking kill me. He was in Indy last Last year. year. Um, Zach, he's been in Philly. Zach Moss? No, not Zach Moss. He's a receiver. Ah, oh, this is... Oh, it was, uh, Zach Pascal. Yes! Thank you. Zach Pascal. Like, Bryson Tremaine is potential Zach Pascal, where dude's going to develop into an NFL receiver. He's just not ready yet. So, them's be the break sometimes if you're uh, Bryson Tremaine. All right. Let's, uh, let's keep cooking. That's probably enough time on a guy who's... As I said, probably on the wrong side of a numbers game. Number four. Unfortunately, I think this guy is too. Mitchell Tinsley's got a nose for the end zone, and that's a good skill to have, and it's one that might eventually get him on an NFL roster. Mitchell Tinsley's problem is, well, he's got a nose for the end zone, and that was in training camp and obviously in the games. He does not have a defined role on special teams. He has not been fantastic there throughout training camp. And if you're going to be an end of roster guy, you got to be able to do that. Just being able to play receiver is not enough when there's not snaps to give you at receiver. 
prime practice squad candidate and the kind of guy that if something happens to one of your top three receivers, I would consider calling up because I might trust him to do a little more for me at receiver than even a guy like Dax Mill. But between what Milne gives you on punt coverage and punt return uh, and potentially kick coverage compared to Tinsley, you got to keep Milne. So these things get funky uh, down roster, and it's not always the sexiest guy who gets to stay or the highest upside guy. But Tinsley did show very well for himself and much like Tremaine should be proud of what he's done all camp long. Um, unfortunately, again, the, the numbers are not going to be in his favor. But could another team pick him up? I think that's possible when he ultimately gets waived because you have to get cut before you can be signed back to practice squad. And in that period, you can A, choose to go to another team's practice squad, uh, or B, they could sign you to their active roster. So good luck to Mitchell Tinsley. You put great stuff on tape, and we'll see how ultimately it pays off. I think the problem is a lot of teams have a lot of Mitchell Tinsley's, the borderline, not really special teams, but talented receiver types. Uh, there's, there's a dime a dozen of those around the league. The question is, which of the guys actually develop long-term to find a home in the league. All right, moving on to some guys that are going to play for this team on the other side of the ball. Number five. James Smith-Williams and F.A. Obata. Um, they both lined up at the three technique again. That's that defensive tackle spot that John Allen plays that lines up between the tackle and the guard. And I thought they both did a good job in the game. I thought James especially did a good job of pushing the pocket. There was a couple of runs, one at edge, one at three tech that he strung out, made the running back bounce outside. All of a sudden, the secondary players, the linebackers are able to come downhill, make tackles at or behind the line of scrimmage. So that is a very encouraging sign. Now, um, are they able to do that on first and second down against top flight offensive linemen in the NFL? We'll see. But it does give you a little bit more flexibility within that defensive line room as you try to figure out the numbers game and you have the right amount of depth inside and outside and you try to justify keeping all of these edge guys. I think ultimately I would. I would not cut any of these guys. Um, and I think that you saw something that I'll get to in a second where like, are you really not playing some guys in the second half of a preseason game if you're considering cutting them? Um, and all three of the veterans on the edge did not play in the second half. So um, I, I thought it was interesting. They went back to that. They lined it up. And I thought those guys did well at the three technique. And it's just Smith Williams and Obata. Two Hill is purely on the edge. Number six. Uh, the physicality of Christian Holmes. Ooh, does it show up? That guy will hit you. And he'll hit you hard. Um, he had the penalty, I, I believe I'm remembering correctly, or got beaten coverage. He, his coverage is mostly good, but like gives up some stuff. If you get stuck playing him at corner, that's not going to be the smoothest experience, although it will be better with Forrest and Curl out there and BSJ in the slot to potentially help him and, you know, starters out there. It's, it's a different thing when you're on an island one-on-one -on -one with a bunch of reserves around you. Uh, and the defense is not, you know, really game planning or anything. They're not trying to protect you. They're just, hey, line up, go play, see what happens. But on special teams and when he comes up to tackle, man, he is fantastic. And if he can continue to work on the coverage portions of his game, he could be a future NFL starter. Um, maybe a guy that by year four, year five has three years of starting football in him. And that's that's not a bad career at all for a seventh rounder. And on teams, he's going to be around for a long time. Um, special teams, he's really, really good. Um, I would say one of their stars on special teams, and he continued to show how that physicality that he plays with shows up in that phase of the game. Speaking of guys who are pretty physical. Number seven. How about Quan Martin? Another interesting night uh, where he's involved in some miscommunication, gives up a couple of plays. I don't think that first touchdown is remotely on him. He probably could have dropped with a little bit more depth. But he's basically playing linebacker. Like, if you're an underneath player, you do have a responsibility to the front of the end zone. Yeah, you have to get enough enough depth to make the throws over you hard. But there also should be someone in the picture behind you. So whether that was Terrell Burgess on one side, the other safety, um, Smith, probably at that point in the game, if I'm remembering correctly, on the other, like, someone else has got to be there to make that play. That is not remotely uh, Quan Martin's fault. And them's the breaks sometimes in the preseason i think it's important to point out though the physicality that he brings where he is right on guys to make tackles and he's a sure tackler 
Um, that is the kind of stuff that gives you a lot of hope for him once you get to the regular season because the physicality that he plays with is also going to translate to him being able to play in the box as a you know the Buffalo nickel, basically as a third linebacker in run support. If you can trust him to come up and tackle, take on blocks, shed blocks, all that kind of stuff, then he's going to be on the field a lot more. It's, a, it's going to be a work in progress with him. And I think they're going to, now that they've taught him everything, narrow down his role, which should benefit him a lot. But for right now, uh, I would say you've seen consistent progress from Quan Martin, even if there is still a lot more to go. Second round pick, he hasn't played a real NFL game yet. That is, again, perfectly expected and okay, allowable when we're talking about preseason football. All right, uh, a thought I had coming... Actually, let me do this one first. Uh, follow up on a point I made earlier. Number eight. Um, the depth chart doesn't lie. At least it traditionally does not. I don't think Ron Rivera is, you know, sitting Jeremy Reeves and Percy Butler if they're not going to play big roles on this team. Like, you say, hey, man, you got you guys got to play a little bit. No, they didn't. They didn't mess around with that. That tells me where they are on the depth chart and the kind of role that they could have in rotation for this team this season. By the way, two of your best special teams guys as well. James Smith-Williams, Casey Tuhill, F.A. Obata not playing at all in the second half I think is a great sign if I am them thinking about my spot on the roster. Um, and then, you know, I think the same could be said for Tyler Larson at center. You know, he played with the twos. And it's like, okay. Well, if Ricky Stromberg was the guy, and I realized they were playing Stromberg as well with the twos at guard, but it's like, okay, well, if, if Ricky was surpassing me on the depth chart at center... Wouldn't he play with the twos? Nope. They got him there. I'm playing center. Sweet. Let's do it. Especially considering Aaron Montero was a guy that played pretty well for them with that second string offensive line at guard previously. So I, I think that tells me something about the roster um, and tells me all those guys are going to be on it. Uh, we'll we'll figure out the numbers later on in the show. But the the depth chart not lying, I think, is uh, is something that means something with Ron Rivera. Number nine. Number nine. I am uh, not entirely convinced that the best path forward for this team at linebacker isn't Kalik Hudson and Jamin Davis together. They brought in Cody Barton, who had a pretty rough spring and summer. They've had Kalik Hudson, who in year four, uh, 2020, 21, 22, 23, yeah, year four, he's a 2020 fifth round pick, has started to make a lot of plays. And he made a lot of plays in the Dallas game last year. And if you feel like you can trust him at the Will linebacker spot and Jamin can pick up the Mike spot where he was at the end of last year, I am not entirely convinced that that is not your best linebacker duo. That having that much speed on the field and having the ability that those guys have to continue to grow together isn't a bad or, you know, wouldn't be a good idea. I think they're probably going to continue to give Barton reps, and I think you're probably your higher upside is still Barton Davis, Davis at the will, Barton at the mic, and and letting Barton figure some things out, especially now you have a week one regular season uh, with Arizona basically tanking. Um, but I I still think that there is like there should be snaps this season where those are your two guys at linebacker, and. I do wonder if Barton doesn't quickly turn things around if they don't go that route anyway, and that would be the right way to go. All right, last but not least, I kept waiting number 10 for my phone to explode because truth be told, I did not watch this game live, which those of you who follow me on Twitter know uh, because I was at the Aces Mystics game on Saturday as it was happening, and I knew that if Cameron Cheeseman had a bad snap in the game, my phone was going to explode with Twitter notifications. Did not have one. Clean snaps all game. Seems like we've got the new technique down. Don't have to ask about it anymore. Obviously, we'll keep an eye on it uh, if it pops up this season. But good game, Cameron Cheeseman. We're done with our long snapper talk. That's first and ten. Ten observations. First segment after each and every commander's game it will return two weeks from today as we will have the arizona game to discuss this is the hoffman show on the team 980 and the odyssey app